All right, so in this video, we're going to solve two quadratic inequalities. We have x squared minus 3 is greater than 0, and x squared minus x minus 1 is less than or equal to 0. So you'll get two problems in this video. They're common problems, good test questions, and we'll solve them both using a sign chart. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so here we're asked to solve a quadratic inequality. We have x squared minus 3 is greater than 0. Now to solve this, what we're going to do is use a sign chart. To use a, to use a sign chart, we're first going to need to find the uh, critical numbers. Now the critical numbers for these polynomial inequalities are just the roots. And so to get the roots, all you have to do is set the function equal to 0. So we'll go off to the side and we'll say x squared minus 3 equals 0. And we know we'll get two solutions here. It's quadratic. I can extract the roots. So x squared equals 3, x equals plus or minus root 3 when I take the square root of both sides. All right, so those are our critical numbers, right? Those are going to be the x-intercepts, the places where the sign could change from positive to negative or negative to positive. So let me write them over here. Okay, so now that I have my critical numbers, I'm going to need to know where, where to put them on a number line. So I'm going to do this on a calculator, and square root of 3 is like 1.73 approximately, and negative square root of 3 is negative 1.73. All right, so next we make a sign chart. Now a sign chart is just a number line. It's the x-axis with those critical numbers breaking it up into regions. And so in this case, I'll get a good scale. And I'll put an open dot at negative 1.73. Now I choose to use an open dot because this is a strict inequality. There's no equal there, so we're not including the zeros. And another open dot at 1.73. Now I'm going to label those with not 1.73, but the exact value, right? So this would be negative square root of 3. And I'm going to label that as square root of 3. OK, so once I have my um, three regions, I then take values and test to see if the results are positive or negative in that region. Now, it doesn't matter what number you choose. I'm just going to take 3 in this case. And I'm going to substitute into the original quadratic. So here we had x squared minus 3. When I plug in 3, I'll have 9 minus 3, which is 6. And that's positive. No matter what value you test, the results will be positive there. Now, in this middle region, I'll choose 0. 0 minus 3 is negative 3, so any number you choose in there, you'll get negative results. And I'll indicate that with a bunch of negative signs. And then in this far region to the left, I'll take, say, negative 3 as a test. And plug in negative 3 squared is 9, 9 minus 3 is 6, that's positive. All right, so this is the sign chart that we're going to use to answer the question. Okay, now in this case, the question is, when is this quadratic greater than zero? Greater than zero means positive or above the x-axis. So the y values are positive when I substitute in these x values. I'm using my sign chart here to see that. And then the y values are going to be positive when I substitute these x values as well. So we have these two intervals that actually solve the original quadratic inequality there. Okay, so these are all my solutions graphed on a number line. Now, we're going to want to present our answers in interval notation. So for this piece, we have negative infinity to negative square root of 3 with a parenthesis, because we have the open dot. So that's non-inclusive. Union, square root of 3 to infinity. Right, so here's all of our infinite number of x values that will solve this quadratic inequality. Okay, so this one was a quadratic inequality. We were able to find those critical values pretty easily. Let's do another one where maybe the critical values are a little harder to find. Okay, so here we have another quadratic inequality. x squared minus x minus 1 is less than or equal to 0. Now this one is going to be a little harder to find the, um, the critical numbers, which are just the roots. And that's where we need to start. So let's go off to the side and set this thing equal to 0 and see what we have. Okay, 
this quadratic here doesn't factor. So what I'm going to have to do is apply the quadratic formula. Okay, in this case, a is 1, b is negative 1, and c is negative 1. So for the quadratic formula, we have x equals negative b plus or minus b squared, so negative 1 squared minus 4 times a times c, all over 2a. Okay? So in this case, we have, simplifying, we have 1 plus or minus square root, inside there the discriminant is 5, all over 2. All right, so there's our two solutions using the quadratic formula. No big deal. That gives us our critical, critical numbers. So let me write them here. Okay, now the next step is to create a sign chart, which is basically the x-axis. It's a number line. Before I do that, I'm going to need to know like where to put these dots, right? Where to put these points on the number line. So I'm going to do this on a calculator, and when I do that, I get negative 0.62. And when I do this one on a calculator, I get 1.62. Okay, and that's going to help me make my sign chart. So the sign chart, again, is just the x-axis, so it's a number line. And let's use a good scale. And in this case, what I'm going to do is use a closed dot because I'm asked to solve a quadratic inequality that's less than or equal to. That equal to is an inclusive inequality. So I'm going to include the zeros. We have one at negative 0.62. That's right here. And I'm going to label that. I'm not going to label that with negative 0.62. I'm going to use the exact value. So 1 minus square root of 5 over 2. And the other one is over here at 1.62. That's right about there. I'll label that 1 plus square root of 5 over 2. Okay, so those two critical values break the number line up into three regions. Now what we're going to do is test to see if it's positive, if the y values are positive or negative in that region. So I'll take any number in this region, I'll say 3 or 10, it doesn't matter, any number would be okay. I'm going to do it mentally, substituting 10 into the original x squared minus x minus 1, I get 10 squared is 100, minus 10 is 90, minus 1 is 89. So that result is definitely going to be positive. Any number you choose in that interval will give you positive results. All right, so I'll test a value in this middle interval. Looks like 0 will be easy. 0 minus 0 minus 1, the result there would be negative 1. And so in that interval, you're getting negative results. And then over here on the far left interval, I'll choose, say, negative 10. And to test that, negative 10 squared is 100, positive 100, plus 10, 110 minus 1. That's definitely going to be positive. Right? And so there we have our sign chart. Now all that's left to do is use the sign chart to answer the question. Now the question here is right here. When is this quadratic less than 0? Less than 0 means negative or below the x-axis. So we look at our sign chart and we can see that we have negative results for these x values. I'll go ahead and shade them in. So these are all the x values that I can plug in that will give me negative results. All right, so that's my answer graphed on a number line. And all that's left to do here is to translate that to interval notation. So in interval notation, I would use square brackets for the inclusiveness. 1 minus square root of 5 over 2 all the way up to 1 plus square root of 5 over 2. Right? And so that's going to be the interval of x values that will solve this quadratic inequality. Okay, so there you go. Two quadratic inequalities. Um, we solve them using sign charts, and you can see they're really not so bad. The hard part is finding those critical numbers, finding those roots. But once you do that, you make the sign chart, and then just answer the question. Okay, so good luck.